Hi there, everyone. It's Christy. I'm back from my conference, which was good and intense and productive. After all of the conferences I've been to over the years, when I hear someone say that a conference was productive, I have to wonder what they really mean. And it's um, you know, I've been doing YouTube now for two years, and it's it's just strange to me to not make a video for an entire week. That would be weird for me too. I wanted to bring attention this week, in particular, to a series of news articles that was inspired in some ways by a shit tweeter to me. Someone sent me a DM going, uh, "Feminism is no longer needed in the West. All it is is a chance for women to um, get a lot, you know, get an advantage over men." My response was to start replying was was to reply with various articles that demonstrated why feminism was needed in the West. This is bringing attention to the plight of a Saudi woman who, seeking asylum, was forcibly returned home. If you are upset with the oppression of women under Islam, the people to take it out on are not the women who are oppressed. And how does it solve the problem of her oppression by a patriarchal misogynistic religion? And how does it solve the problem to treat her with the same contempt and misogynistic attitudes that her religion forces upon her, or even worse, with violence? How do you end the oppression of people by attacking the oppressed? It makes no sense. If people come to the United States and other countries where these practices are legal, and I think they should be illegal in all countries, there should not be exceptions made for customs. Now, I also feel the same way about the circumcision of boys. I think that genital mutilation of children is wrong in every case, in every single case. And I think that if you want to have these kinds of rituals, you can wait till the child is old enough to consent to participate. That's my stance. Always has been. I hope it always will be. I believe in bodily autonomy and see no reason why parents should be able to cut parts off of their children just because they donated their genetic materials to that person's body. That body does not belong to them. It belongs to their children. A woman who escaped from Ghana to avoid female genital mutilation has been ordered to leave Australia in just over two weeks after her application for a protection visa was rejected. From the age of nine until six years ago when she arrived in Perth, aged 30, she would run away every July, the month when women are made to have their genitalia mutilated. She would sleep on the streets and scavenge for food in cities and other villages. She said she was sometimes chased by up to three men who wanted to kidnap her and force her to undergo the procedure. Quote, I have always been running and running and running. I could not stop running until I got to Australia, she said from her St. James unit. I would rather die than go through that pain. Across the whole of England, 2,332 attendances for female genital mutilation were recorded during the last quarter of 2016. These attendances included 1,268 women or girls whose cases were newly recorded. I know that there are many people who want feminists in the West to only focus on women in the Middle East, but the fact is that these are neighborhood issues. These are cases of, of oppressive, patriarchal, misogynistic practices that are happening, if you're in the UK, maybe right next door. Feminism is needed in the West, and feminists and people who support women's bodily autonomy, we need to be aware of these cases outraged by them, and working on changing the cultural practices in these communities to prevent girls from being mutilated like this. We have it within our ability to bring attention to this and to protect these girls. These are all really good examples. I agree with you about all of these examples. You are making very good points here. And the question is, what are we doing? And I'm going to tell you, Making a YouTube video isn't enough. Especially not the way that a lot of anti-feminists talk about this, where it's all about making fun of Muslims and saying that Islam sucks and things that don't actually say anything productive towards tackling the issues at hand. We can yell and scream that a belief system is bad, but that doesn't change people's belief in it. It doesn't reduce the negative effects of that belief system, and unless one is for a totalitarian government that tells people what belief system they can and cannot have, it doesn't work towards changing any laws that will help the situation either. If I'm sitting here making this video myself thinking, I'm not doing enough. I don't even live in the UK, and I don't feel like I'm doing enough. So, uh, again, the idea that we don't need feminism in the West is just refuted by looking through and paying attention to the stories in your own newspapers. See, here's where we're going to differ. 
We don't need feminism to tackle those things, just as we don't need to scream about the evils of Islam in order to tackle the negative issues that surround the traditions of Islam. Just as we don't need Jesus to forgive ourselves for the terrible things that we've ever done. Just as we don't need to be an MRA to argue against male genital mutilation. Now, if you're defining feminism as the belief system of anyone who tries to promote equality for women, then we could also state that the idea of intersectionalism, the idea of embracing diversity, is Catholic. Catholic is defined as a mindset that includes a wide variety of things, all embracing. So, sorry, you can't attach feminism to anything that has ever benefited or made things more equal for women nor the idea of anything that benefits or makes things more equal for women. Shouldn't someone, at the very least, define themselves as a feminist to actually be considered a feminist? Or does that get in the way of attributing feminism to everything good that's ever happened to women throughout history? And now that intersectionality is part of the movement, feminism is claiming responsibility for gay rights, minority rights, and anything else good in the world that has happened on a social level for everyone except for straight white males, anything that benefits straight white males that doesn't specifically address women's issues is considered either religious in nature or it's an MRA thing, which is bad because it doesn't put women first. Another reason that we need feminism in the West is to bring awareness to, pay attention to, and speak out against institutional uh, practices that protect sexual predators or leave people vulnerable to sexual attacks. Why is feminism necessary for that? Why can't we just be against those things on our own without an ideology attached? An advocacy group said Tuesday that the U.S. Department of Homeland Security's internal watchdog fielded more than 1,000 complaints of sexual assault or sexual abuse from people in U.S. custody in a little more than two years. Because you're an undocumented immigrant, you don't lose your human rights. You don't lose the right to be safe from sexual abuse or sexual harassment. Agreed. And again, this is something that I think feminists in particular pay attention to because of the vulnerability of women to these complaints. They're disproportionately made by women, and these are disproportionately women's concerns. But obviously, any sexual assault, any sexual abuse, whatever the sex or genders of the perpetrators and the victims, these are wrong. They need to be identified and dealt with in a rigorous manner that makes sure people are protected and safe. Yes, but that doesn't mean that people need feminism to tackle those issues. Sure, feminists focus on some of those specific things about those issues more than a lot of other groups do, but that doesn't mean that those issues need feminism in order to be tackled. The latest San Bernardino shooting was also an act of terror, a much more common kind, with a much higher death toll, the kind women face when trapped in abusive relationships. According to PolitiFact, there have been 71 deaths due to extremist attacks on U.S. soil from 2005 until 2015. Compare that to the drumbeat of women killed by their intimate partners, which number three daily. In California alone, there were 118 domestic violence-related homicides in 2015. This is an area that I think feminists could really help out. Feminists could get the word out that this sort of thing is still happening. It's still happening. On average, there are nearly 11 murder-suicides nationally each week. It shouldn't be routine. We should be as outraged at the systematic killing of innocent people in a terrorist attack as we are people who are innocent being killed by their estranged partners because their partners can't handle them breaking up. That's far more likely to happen to you or someone you know or someone you love than being um, in a terrorist attack. Agreed. What rape culture d refers to, at least in, in this instance, I'm going to be talking about it, is institutional practices or people who hold power in an institution who try to cover up sexual assault, who try to protect certain people that they want to protect and silence victims and marginalize victims. An example of this is the Catholic Church with the priest pedophilia scandal. That is an example of a rape culture because men who sexually assaulted children, who raped children, were protected 
and they were allowed to go on and continue to commit more sexual assaults against more children. You can see it with the the Jerry um, Sandusky sexual uh, assault case, where the university tried to protect him. And as a consequence of their trying to protect him and ignoring the consequences and the severity of his sexual assaults, he was allowed to victimize more people. I would agree with your assessments that the things that you've talked about here would be rape culture. There are some people who really stretch the definition of rape culture to ridiculous levels where if you don't basically agree with the idea of practically having a written contract in order to have sex with someone, uh, you're promoting rape culture. And so, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a touchy phrase, rape culture is. A lot of people have very much ruined that phrase. I personally don't like using it because people associate that phrase with the ones who are saying that just about everyone is part of rape culture. This case, though, it's not a traditional sexual assault scandal, as we would think of, where we're talking about boys sexually assaulting girls. Here we're talking about sexual assaults that are being covered up as part of hazing rituals. Yes, there are people who will try to cover this up. These people are generally not part of the general public. It's people that are within an institution. From the article... An explosive high school sexual assault scandal rocking the small town of Lavernia, Texas, widened Tuesday with the arrest of three additional students and the filing of a federal lawsuit alleging school officials knew about the criminal hazings going on in the athletic program and failed to protect student victims. It's awful. Again, that's why I'm calling it a rape culture story. And I just want to point out again before moving on. When people deny rape culture exists, when people deny rape culture is a thing that happens in the West, they're denying that what is happening at this institution is is wrong or a problem. No, that's not what they're saying. They're saying that our culture does not promote rape. Our culture doesn't do what you find in the Middle East. Now, There are obviously institutions where there is some corruption, and most people speak against that sort of thing. So when people are saying there is no rape culture, they're trying to say that, yeah, our society doesn't generally promote rape. They don't think that rape is a good thing. You have to realize that most people don't study sociology like you do, so when they make the statements against the concept of rape culture, they're just taking those words at face value. Now, if you went and explained all this stuff that you're talking about to these people, they probably would say, well, of course that exists and it's terrible. Most people think it's terrible. This is what a rape culture is. It's it's a culture, an institutional practice in this case, that excuses and overlooks the sexual crimes of certain individuals that are have a high status. And what people resent is when they get told that they're a part of a culture that does this. And until we recognize the way that systems protect rapists, and we look at the institutional incentives to protect sexual people who commit sexual assault or rape, and we undo those perverse incentives to stay quiet, to p- push it all under the rug, You know what does that? Just getting it out in the open. Having the subject in general be talked about more. We don't need feminism for that. We didn't need feminism to show the corruption in the Catholic Church. Then we're going to not be dealing with the problem at the institutional level. And that's what I think the point of discussing rape culture is, is to look beyond the individual criminals who are or the the people accused of committing these crimes and look at the way that institutions either minimize the problem thereby allowing it to continue or actively cover it up when i usually hear feminists talking about rape culture i hear them blaming everyone around them for a rape culture as if our culture supports rape another story out of the united states we have seen nonstop the way that Republicans go after Planned Parenthood and women's health. This is another step in that. We've seen Donald Trump going after, well, he's gagged 
medical of officials around the world, or at least tried to gag them in order to prevent them from even discussing abortion as an option with patients in other countries. It's deplorable, like his basket of loyal supporters. And feminism provides a moral frame, an ideological set of principles that we can use to critique. When you combine morals and an ideology, you get a religion. It doesn't matter whether or not that religion believes in a god. It doesn't matter. We don't need to use a religion to fight this stuff. We just need to use logic and reason to fight this stuff. We just need to point out these things to take care of this stuff. We need to bring it up in a way that people can actually understand rather than using ideological, sociological language. If you want to reach people, you have to use the words and terminology and concepts that they understand or that they will understand. You don't make it into some elitist thing. So making it sound like in order to take care of these problems, we need to do it this way. Well, that sounds just like someone in N.A. telling people, oh, well, N.A. is the only way. No, uh, please I, I just, I don't take that sort of thing well. You know, you right there have stated, you've, you've blatantly admitted that this is an ideology. This is a set of morals and an ideology. That's not how you fight this stuff. That's like trying to fight fire with fire. It doesn't work. It just causes more flames. If you want to fight things that often stem, often have their roots in religion. You can't imitate a religion and expect to extinguish the messed up things about the religion. These are all things that are definitely within the feminist wheelhouse and that we have a theoretical framework for talking about. We don't have to argue things from the perspective of a particular theory in order to talk about it. That's like saying that you can't talk about music unless you refer to things using correct music terminology, unless you use correct music theory for everything. You know, well, well we have this theory, so now we can talk about it. Uh, now we can, you know, now we can make music. And No, you, you can make music regardless of whether or not you've studied the theory. People can talk about these subjects regardless of if they've studied feminist theory. And what's disappointing is the institutions uh, that are talking about feminist theory are trying to make it sound like we can't resolve any of these issues without learning all this terminology and stuff first. You know, because N.A. is the only way, right? Or something like that, right? It's why we need feminism in the West, and hopefully to stop things like Texas men following people into the bathroom to gender check them. We don't need feminism for that. We need reasonable people calling out bullshit behavior.